The only time I've ever been red flagged on Facebook was the last time I made a video about this tree. This is Mutsonzoa uh, Pseudolacna stylus Maproneae folia. I am Gus the African plant hunter. This is the next episode in my ongoing series on medicinal plants of southern Africa. Why was I red flagged? Well, funny story, it was during lockdown and one of my neighbors came to me and she said, Gus, I had a dream and in my dream, this tree is the cure to that disease which was keeping us all locked down at the time, you know the one I mean. And uh, when I mentioned that in my video, I was red flagged for potentially spreading false news. Uh, so I won't mention it again. But this tree, which we call the kudaberry uh, in South Africa, here in Zimbabwe, we actually refer to it as the dikeberry because the berries are very popular with antelope and indeed livestock. Uh, it's called Mutsonzoa in Shona, and in Ndevele, it's called Nkombampunzi. It is a beautiful ornamental tree to have in your garden, well known for the spectacular autumnal flush just before the leaves drop in winter. Right now it's the middle of summer so the leaves are green but even now they have a very particular color um, and the big round berries are very popular with uh, wild animals and make this tree uh, a popular uh, feeding tree. It's also a, a tree for the larva of some really beautiful butterflies uh, the paradise skipper, the apricot playboy and others. So it's a lovely tree to have in your garden and it has a lot of traditional medicinal uses. So let's have a look at those. Well, all parts of the tree, the root, the bark and the leaves are used in traditional medicine. Let's uh, start with the roots. So the roots are powdered, dried, powdered and taken in an infusion or decoction for various stomach ailments, uh, also used to treat um, gonorrhea and various um, STIs, also for infertility. The roots are sometimes cut and made into a kind of a, a liquid, pulpy liquid, which is then applied topically to uh, leprosy sores. In Tanzania, the roots are used to treat cancerous tumors. And what they do there is they dry up uh, the root, they powder it, dry it up, mix it with some poisonous insects, they then burn the whole mess and then the ash is then topically applied. Uh, so that is quite an interesting traditional medicinal use. The bark is also used, uh, bark infusions um, are also consumed for stomach problems. Uh, dry bark is then burnt and uh, the smoke is inhaled for, uh, as a treatment for uh, pneumonia, tuberculosis. A bark infusion is also consumed internally to treat nausea and dizziness. And then what about the leaves? So the leaves are um, mixed with the leaves of the pigeon pea, Kajanus Kajan, and uh, the two together are then put into um, a liquid infusion, drops of which are then applied into the ear for earaches. Uh, that's quite a well-known um, ear treatment, which is there's not so many traditional medicines used specifically for ears. It's also used in veterinary medicine, the, or traditional veterinary medicine. The leaves are used, a decoction is used to treat foot rot in ruminants. And then also the leaves are boiled up and the resulting liquid is strained and then used as a topical wound healing solution, particularly applied to wounds on the side of your body. So those are the traditional medicinal uses of this and you would think that there would be a, a lot of substantiation in uh, modern allopathic medicine, but surprisingly, I cannot find any single reference to this tree in any form of scientific publication relating to uh, pharmacological activity, which is amazing. And I think suggests that there's a huge opportunity for researchers. The only plant that's even closely related to this uh, that I know has uh, medicinal use is the snowberry, Flugia virosa, which has an indole alkaloid, which has got some quite uh, significant anthelmintic um, and uh, antibacterial activity. But this tree is one that if you are a young or even a mature like me researcher and you're looking for a topic uh, 
this is one where I think you would definitely get some rewarding results. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you to those of you who support me through Patreon. And uh, if you don't, uh, but you would like to, it's very easy to find me there, patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter. And uh, a little monthly contribution helps me to make more videos like this. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, you can find them on my YouTube and Facebook and Instagram channels. Hopefully they will not be taken down uh, because I didn't mention that virus whose name cannot be mentioned. All right, guys, I'm off to check out some other medicinal plants in Southern Africa. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.